Good morning, brothers and sisters. This is Brother Joe, and I'm so glad you joined me for the Lord's Word of God today. And today, the Word of God is brought to you through the guidance and direction of the Holy Spirit. And this message is given to you with love and kindness. And so, brothers and sisters, if you brought your Bibles today, please turn to the book of Psalms 34. And reading verse 18. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and save such as have the contrite spirit. And if we back up and read verse 10, it reads, But those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. And so, brothers and sisters, if you're not saved today, you need to be. And God wants to heal your broken heart. Because anyone that does not have the Holy Spirit inside of them, they don't have the love of Jesus inside of them. They have a broken heart. And some hearts are broken worse than others. But the only thing that can heal your heart is Jesus. So now, brothers and sisters, turn with me to the book of Revelation chapter 22. We'll start reading verse 1. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of its street and on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore twelve fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. So now, brothers and sisters, our ultimate destination, where we're going to be with God the Father and the Son, our Lord and Savior, for eternity, forever, is going to be so beautiful, our minds really can't imagine. You've thought of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden and how beautiful it was, right? This is going to be even better. And here it says that there's going to be a river of living water that flows from the throne. And trees will be planted, the roots will go right into the river and bear fruit for us to live. And we will eat that fruit from the tree of life. And every month there'll be a fruit for us to eat. We don't have to work for it. We don't have to plant it. We don't have to do anything. It's at your hands to pick off and eat. But it ended with the leaves of the tree were for the healing Okay, And what it is, is you will take the leaves off and you will rub it on any wound that you have and it'll be healed. Just like that. But today, Jesus is the one that heals. And if you're here today and you've been diagnosed with some horrible disease like cancer, Jesus can heal you. And only Jesus in 1984, in October, I was diagnosed with melanoma cancer stage four. And my doctor told me the longest I could live was five years. And this October will be 37 years, cancer free. Praise God, praise Yeshua. That's how you say Jesus in Hebrew. And brothers and sisters, if you have an experience like that, you need to share it with others and praise Jesus all the way. He has blessed you with the healing and we need to bless him with the praise. Amen? Amen. So brothers and sisters, if 
If you're brokenhearted today, God wants to heal you. Jesus wants to heal you. And if you haven't given your life to Jesus, you need to. It's like a car door. Jesus is right there on the outside, but you're sitting in the driver's seat. And he's over at the passenger side, wants in. He wants in your heart. But it's up to you to lean over and turn the knob and open it. And he will come in. And he will come in your life and in your heart. He'll take that stony heart out of you and fill you with a pure loving heart. Renew your mind and fill you with the Holy Spirit. But you have to take that first step and open that door. So brothers and sisters, if you want to take that step, say a prayer with me. Please bow your heads now and repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I humbly come before your throne. Thank you, Father, for sending your only begotten Son to come incarnated in human form, to die a crucifixion death for me. For remission of sins, Please, Lord, forgive me for my sins. Thank you, Jesus, for being obedient unto death. To redeem me back to God. Thank you, Lord. Please, Father, help me to make proper changes in my life, to please you and do your will. When you feel I'm worthy, Lord, please fill me with the Holy Spirit. Write my name in the book of life and seal me for the day of redemption. Father, your will always be done, not mine. And I pray this in the precious name of Yeshua, Jesus. Amen. Amen, brothers and sisters. And so if you said that prayer today, you made an oath to the Lord to give your life to him. And you need to. Acts 2.38 reads, Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so, brothers and sisters, if you said that prayer, Two things you need to do to receive the Holy Spirit. You need to repent. That means turn from your sinful ways. And you need to get baptized in the name of Jesus. And so the first thing you need to do is make proper changes in your life to repent. And the first thing And probably the most important thing to get you on that path to righteousness is get rid of evil company. Scripture says, evil company corrupts good habits. So start hanging around with other Christians. Find a Bible teaching Christian church to attend every week. If you miss a day, it's okay. But regularly attend that Bible teaching church. And associate with those people. And you can pray for them and they can pray for you. When you pray for others, it's stronger than praying for yourself. Amen? Amen. In Philippians 4.13 it reads, 
I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In Matthew 17, 20, it explains that if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can move a mountain. Well, cancer is a mountain. Amen? Amen. And you can move that mountain if you have faith that Jesus can heal you. But always remember, brothers and sisters, you didn't heal yourself. It was Jesus that healed you. And then praise his name. Give him all the glory and share your experience with others. So they too, if they haven't given their life to the Lord, can give their life to the Lord. And we can live with him for eternity. Can you imagine? You really can't imagine how wonderful it's going to be. He gave us that description in Revelation. But the best part is being with our Lord and Savior. When I picture Jesus, I picture enormous amount of love. Unmeasurable amount of love. And also kindness. An incredible amount of kindness. And he's long-suffering. I know that. That means patient. He's been patient for you to give your life to Jesus 100%. He has. More so than you would be. I know more so than I would. Because he died on a cross for you. And he's been waiting for you to give your life to him 100%. He doesn't want you to hold back that one sin. Don't do it. And he knows you're going to make a mistake. Even when you have the Holy Spirit, he knows you're going to make a mistake. But we're saved by grace, brothers and sisters. And he forgives us. But you need to pray. Pray in the morning. Get on your knees in private. And thank him for keeping evil from you throughout the night. And ask him to keep evil from you throughout the day that covers everything. Rapes, attacks, accidents, diseases, everything. And thank him for filling you with the Holy Spirit. Or ask him to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Every day you need renewed with that Holy Spirit. It's like gas going into a car. Ask to be refilled with that Holy Spirit every day and ask Him to lead you out of temptation. And every night, get on your knees and ask Him for forgiveness for any sins you did that day. And any sins you did that you didn't know were sins. Because sometimes we can sin and not realize it. Amen? Amen. And then ask him to keep evil from you throughout the night. That way, that burglar is not coming in your house. And if he does, he's going to give you the power to overpower him. Because he is there to take care of his Christians. Right? In Romans, it tells us, all good things work for the good for those who love the Lord. Amen? Amen. Buy a Bible and make sure that you read it every day. I encourage you to read the whole book of Genesis. It gives you a great history of when God made the earth and everything and all things. And it's a wonderful book to read. But the New Testament is the gospel. And the first four books are the gospel of Jesus. And he explains to you how to walk and how to serve the Lord. And you have to read the word, otherwise you don't know what he wants and how to please God and do his will. And brothers and sisters, I invite you to listen to my messages. You can find uh, Brother Joe's messages and sermons on YouTube or podcast, or Facebook, Brothers Joe. And I just encourage you to live out your life 
having the mind of Jesus, which was to please God and do his will. So brothers and sisters, I love you, and I look forward to sharing the word of God with you again. Amen.